Hello, Libra. How's everybody doing today? I hope that you are doing fantastically well, and I'm looking forward to bringing forth um, all the messages that are coming through today. Some really powerful ones, some that are synchronistic with and uh, connected to what we just talked about yesterday in our collective. Boy. And uh, so I can't wait to share that and uh, talk about how this is going to uh, kind of help you out in the month ahead. So let me talk a little bit about who I am and what we'll be doing today. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh, and what we're gonna be looking at um, is the period of time here for the next six to eight weeks. And this gives you a chance to really create a sense of um, change in your life. I believe we are you know, creating free will each and every moment, navigating our own uh, sort of chariot forward. And what I'm gonna help you with here as we look at your August forecast in July is a chance for you to navigate and make the best decisions possible. So it's all about opportunities. Everything that we see today, even if there's a challenge, is going to help you make a decision that brings you on that path a little bit better. The organization for today is in four major parts or five major parts. We begin with channeled messages, which is what I was doing before I came here. <laughs> Apollo's in the background doing some channeling of his own, but channeled messages will come through first. These are things that I get through dreams, meditation, and the act of automatic writing, which is just me writing as I uh, show up here this morning. Then I'll move along to the Celtic cross where we'll take a closer look at any of the opportunities or potential roadblocks that are setting themselves up for you. And then we'll go a little bit deeper into the soul, not the soul path, but the expanded forecast where we look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. We'll review and then in the soul path, we go a little deeper into like the big idea of whatever this month is bringing forth. Well, uh, and then after that, we will meditate and look at your final question. So there's a lot to move through today. And uh, if you give me time, usually by the next day, I will also put all the timestamps in. So it won't be available immediately, but I'll put it in as quickly as possible. That way you can come back to this and review it because it is meant to be a resource where you can um, learn what you're doing, uh, look at what the energy is and continue to sort of make those course corrections, just like a GPS. Okay, so uh, let's get started. A couple of quick notes as I get everything set up here. Um, if you would like to show support today or anytime, you can do that by clicking on the um, this, this little dollar sign emoji next to the happy face here. And basically from there, you can send a sticker, say hello, or you can even join the channel and become a sustaining member. Membership has um, some privileges, including access to Q&A or polls if I put them up. And you also get extra emojis just as a way of saying thanks. And you help me produce more content. I've been able to amp it up from 12 to 15 videos per month. And I've even started doing some shorts on other platforms, all of that with your assistance. So thank you so much. And I've been using a lot of new decks as well. You can look at the collective yesterday. Everything that I'm using yesterday was a part of that. So thanks. Uh, Maria is going to be my moderator. She can help out if you have any high level questions, point in the right direction if you're looking for something on my website. Otherwise, Let's get started. So again, this can be used for Libra uh, as sun, rising, moon, Venus. And if you're really well versed in your chart, you can use it for the other aspects. You can also cross watch on behalf of someone that you know. And um, if you ever just need to show up, even if this is in a very minor placement or even if it's not in your placement, you can always come to one of my readings. There's messages for everyone present, whether you're watching it live or on replay. And yes, this will be available afterwards for replay. So. Today's um, spirit totem, I always connect with one animal, insect, or even element, like, um, you know, air, et cetera. But today I, I actually connected with the lovely hummingbird, which is one of my favorite um, birds, uh, animals uh, that I see on almost a day-to-day -day basis sometimes here in Southern California. There's a lot of them. Um, when I see a hummingbird, for me, it is a sign that First of all, I'm being protected and also to always think higher, to raise my frequency. They're called hummingbirds because you can actually hear the vibration of their wings as they're moving so fast if you have decent hearing. And some of them are really small. I guess I was doing some research and one of them is called like a bumblebee. Um, <laughs> I think it's the bumblebee hummingbird. It's like really tiny. These are tiny birds. Um, lovely though. Yeah, I think this is the... <laughs> This is the, the little, um, I mean, come on. There's no way you can't really like the hummingbird. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about what this lovely creature is bringing in for us uh, as far as messages come uh, for your sign today. We have, again, hummingbird as the main energy. And in addition to being the smallest bird on the planet, they can also fly in all directions. So that means they can fly up, down, backwards. And I, in my research, I saw that they can even go upside down. So. Um, Basically, they are not stuck. 
And if any of you are in a place where you're feeling that moment of sort of being in the hanged man, uh, where it feels like, why is this not moving fast enough? Why, th why can't things kind of shift? The Hummingbird's coming through today to help you figure that out. And thank you so much, Kathy, for that sticker that helps. Um, so what they remind us to do is to look at a situation from all angles. A lot of times we're just looking at surface or what's in front of us, very much like four of cups. And meanwhile, spirit's trying to hand you something from the side. Uh, and this is saying, you know, remember the surface or, you know, what's right in front of your eyes is sometimes uh, just part of that. It's like the tip of the iceberg or it could even be a projection, um, part illusion to what's going on, right? So look at it from another point of view and know that you can start to make movements in other directions. You don't have to just stay on the, the straight and narrow. Um, thank you, Robert, as well. Um, they travel over 2,000 miles or 3,200 kilometers. And um, this is for their like migration. A lot of them will go to Mexico to um, those, if you're in the Eastern coast, I think they go to, to Mexico to go in the winter and basically weather it out. Um, so that's a long distance for that little tiny bird. Um, 2,000 miles or 3,200 kilometers. Uh, so, you know, that on, in the U.S., it's like coast to coast, right? That's a big distance. So um, they're reminding you in your life to also go the distance. How far would you go to create something in your life, a goal, a dream, a change that you're interested in seeing happen? This is this is sort of a calling and a moment for you to realize, okay, this is, this is something I care about. I and, and it's a reminder that size or you know, kind of like where you fit into the hierarchy, it's not so important. It's more about momentum, speed, energy management, which we're gonna be talking about in a moment. If they can do it, you can do it too. So going the distance is what I always kind of infer when I see a hummingbird as well. Now, Libra, I know, I know you well because uh, we are connected in sun sign. Uh, one thing that Libra is usually very good at is um, being able to communicate, being able to hold space with others. Now, the fact that the hummingbird came in is actually kind of interesting. I see it as overall an auspicious uh, animal, but it is not very social. And if you've ever had a feeder at home or if you have like plumeria or hibiscus or any sort of, you know, red, orange flowers that they love to kind of frequent, you'll notice that they fight. There's a lot of territorial battles like in the air, like dive bombing. Um, and as I did some research today, I also found out that with exception to mating season, they typically travel alone and, and even sort of leave parenting up to one of the, the birds, uh, the two partners. So it's usually like solo traveling, solo parenting, and then once the little babies are old enough, then they're on their own too. So there's this very hermit-like energy that um, is a part of that and very territorial energy. So in tarot, this would be the moon and the hermit that would come through really strongly with this. Ironically, because of their ability to, they're very attractive sort of um, animals, people are attracted to them. So you kind of have the energy of the hummingbird where I think that you'll do well socially, um, you will be able to engage with others, but you want your time, your space, you need that. And you may even be feeling sometimes like if somebody st outstays their welcome, you know, you have a house guest or something like that, or if there's a party and it's going maybe like a couple hours longer than it should, this is where you're gonna have to figure out how to set boundaries because it feels like your energy needs a little bit more time to reset or recharge. So, um, you know, as I was saying, there's a lot of solo energy here, hermit energy, which is okay. The hermit energy may be setting in for you so that you can do a little bit of um, healing, self-discovery. Also as Libra, what can happen sometimes, uh, fellow Libra, is that you can get tapped out, right? Because you're so good at listening and communicating, uh, there's a <laughs> there's a misperception sometimes that people can just take advantage of that. Oh, you're such a good. Let me let. Can you? Can I just talk to you? And and you know, again, several hours later, you think I can't take this anymore. So what's more important for you is to establish some boundaries, to listen with love, but also to to sort of remind them that you have your own things to do, and it's okay to hermit. The hermit's a good card. It's a spiritual card because what is the hermit doing? He's kindling the light, right? He's got it in the uh, the lantern there. So you got to save a little bit. And that's what I'm looking at here as we're, those of you joining me in July and even to the end of August, there's a six to eight week period where energy management is going to be really important. So uh, I'm giving you encouragement and permission to hermit as needed. You're probably still going to have to be in public because the hermit's still the, the star. You're just going to have to figure out when to kind of let things shine and when to pull things in. Okay, 
And uh, the uh, basically your communication skills, skills are still on par this month, um, but the recharging is so important, particularly for those of you that are either highly sensitive, uh, empathic, psychic, or just again, maybe in a job or, or family situation where there's a lot of people leaning on you or swarming around you and you need that space and uh, peace of mind. I have noticed, like, just again, in my travels, sometimes you'll see a hummingbird sleeping on or perching on a tree and it doesn't seem to be moving if it's really early, like say you're out at five or six in the morning, kind of waits for the sun and then they start to gently move. There's actually a fancy word for that. I guess it's called torpor. It's a very um, deep sleep, almost to the point of like they're in hibernation, deep meditation, deep hibernation. Um, so it has a special name. The name doesn't matter as much as the fact that they slow their metabolism to one fifteenth of the normal metabolism. And that is because, you know, they, they require so much energy to move around that in order to sort of like sleep through the night, they have to slow their heartbeat. I think it was like 50 beats per minute if, um, cause I kind of sometimes have a photographic memory and I could see the, the page. I think it was uh, 50 beats per minute. And I wrote down the, um, the slowing of it, but one fifteenth of the metabolism is amazing. And what it does is it allows them to save 60% of their energy. Literally, this is like six of pentacles. Um, take time to meditate, to plan, and to manage your resources is what this is teaching us. This bird that travels all over the world, that goes really fast, that constantly drinks, um, in the evening, it takes time to rest, and not just rest, but really slow things down. So it's not buzzing all through the night drinking flowers. It's perched somewhere safe, and it's, it's almost nearly not moving or alive. It slows down so much. I read that you know in, in uh, colder climates, it's almost to the point of hyperthermia because they've slowed down that much. They figured out the limit and they push it. Um, so we don't wanna push it that much. It's just a sort of matter of understanding that, um, especially as you get older, there are, there's only so much you can push out uh, you know, energetically. Uh, and it's like candles, you, know, you have to replace them after a certain point because the wicks are done. There's nothing left. There's no wax left uh, either to kind of keep the wick from burning out. So you're going to have to just make sure that you don't get to that burnout phase. Okay. Because it takes longer and longer to recover when you have those sort of like energetic crashes. Um, as I said earlier, whenever I see this, it's almost like spirit telling me, think, think higher, raise your frequency. It's going to be okay, Nicholas. Whatever you're worried about, it's going to be all right. So the fact that this came through for you is also auspicious. It's reminding you to think of what is possible not what is wrong. Um, and uh, because you are making real time changes, changes in real time that radically shift your trajectory. So as you start to think that, uh, you know, this would be your mantra, I am strong, I am capable, I am perceptive, I am able to change this situation, then you start to allow yourself to think of ways to validate each of those thoughts. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the alchemy of thoughts, but I wanted to give you another fun fact with uh, hummingbirds which kind of gets behind the whole mind over matter thing. Um, their brain makes up 4.2% of their body. And in a human, it's only about 2% of our body. So it's a big brained bird. And it's the biggest sort of brain of all the birds that I was able to research today. So it may be um, the largest in the bird kingdom. And it is actually percentage wise bigger than our brains. And that's how they can remember the migratory paths and all these sort of complicated places to go for feeding and everything. They're smart. So it's a spiritual animal that can move really quickly, that has a high frequency that it actually moves and exists in. And it has a really high level of intelligence considering its, um, its size. So it's reminding us, we don't use all of our brain capacity anyway, to kind of really put our mind behind something. Uh, put your mind to any task and you're gonna start to see progress on it. I wrote about this in my sci-fi book, but it's good to just kind of like repeat it here and in sort of lay terms. But, um, you know, thoughts are alchemic, fancy word for meaning that they can shift things. They can create, they can destroy, they can transmute. If you think it'll never happen, you just destroyed that future possibility that it could happen. If you think maybe it'll happen or I'm going to make it happen, you just opened up like 100 doorways that could make that happen. So they create and they, dest they destroy. You can also transmute or adjust. So if you think instead of like, I hate somebody, you could think this person triggers me and I'm gonna try to not let them do it that much. I might even have some empathy for why they are the way they are. And I'm just going to not let them occupy so much time and energy in my mind. That's an alchemic way to look at it. You're not giving power to them um, because they're not worth it. 
So you're not going to sit there and think, um, I'm angry at you. I hate you. You're bad. You're good. Stop putting judgments and values on, on things like that. Put positive values, positive goals, and positive sort of alchemy towards what you can a, a change and adjust. But when we think of, I like to use this a, a example for, um, for children. Uh, if there's someone younger in your life, particularly kids, and um, even <laughs> my dog who's moved his bed behind me, he wanted to be closer, um, rescues like him. You have to think of what's possible because when I met him, he was super shy and he didn't sort of know who he was. You can see him hiding right now. He likes to do that. He knows I'm talking about him. Um, so I had to give him a chance to think, you know what? I know you have a big personality. And now he throws toys around. He comes over and nudges me. He's playful. But I had, I had to sort of see that that potential was there and give him space to be himself. So even when he throws all of his little toys around beneath, <laughs> behind me or whatever, I'm actually really happy to see that he's got his personality. For children, if they've gone through a difficult time, maybe you know they got poor grades at school or they had a fight at, uh, with a, a friend at school or they're just having, they're going through something, let them know that you love them and that you believe in them. And this is true of adults too. And uh, and also, you know, someone the other day scolded me and say that I, you know, I focus on the children's point of view. It's usually because they need the most protection, but children as well, especially older children, you can look at your parents now through a different eye and take a look at them and see that they were just grown up kids trying to do the best they could. Especially when you hit the age that you realize that they had you, you realize, oh my gosh, they probably were not prepared at all for this. So giving everyone the benefit of the doubt is a good thing. And then focusing your um, alchemic thoughts on what you can create, what you can do, it's gonna help you a lot this month, Libra. Um, words like incantations reinforce thoughts, belief uh, creates reality. So the reason that magic uh, or, or like spell work works is because it's the connection of this, this, and this. So I feel it, I think it, I speak it, I do it. And when you, when you do all of that, you are a creator, you're magical. We all have the capacity to do that. I wrote in my book, magic is just a new truth being uh, waiting to be discovered. We call it magic, but it's just energetic alchemy. And there's different ways to do it. And I'm talking about one way that doesn't require any sort of, you know, <laughs> you don't need herbs and, 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 and spells and everything. It's just a combination of thinking, feeling, speaking, doing. Then you're magical. Okay. So there you go. Um, understand where you are, where you are blocked, believe in your abilities and then just start to take some action. And that's what the hummingbird wanted to remind us today. Keep moving. As long as you're moving, you're doing. If you're in that stasis state, nothing's really going on. All right. This particular um, image has come to me a couple of times. I can't remember the last sign that it came to. This one was outside though, and it was a little bit more specific. So um, this month, Libra, you have the capacity to reach great heights. Um, I saw, it felt like initially I was in a building, then I was above it, then I was at a mountaintop. I was sort of at, like at the top of the world looking out to the point that um, through your eyes, I was feeling the sense of dizziness um, so high that I was dizzy, like the top reaches where you, you know, even if, if you're a plane, you need to come down a little bit. So I want you to really dream, really think things through. This was a different version of like seven of cups energy which is allowing not just yourself to see what's up there, but to literally go up there and look at it from another angle, like the bird would, like the hummingbird would. Um, what I want you to do in this sort of dream state or this daydreaming state, which is important, the seven of cups can be very effective at this, um, write down what you're seeing. That's why I have to, when I get in the morning, get up in the morning, like tap all these streams into my phone so I don't forget it or write it on a piece of paper or record it into a voice memo, something so that I have, um, you know, I can remember it. Usually then while I'm taking a shower and getting ready, I, I will be able to kind of like come up with everything. Then I write it down. Um, write it down so you can see it, um, perfect it a little bit and create a tangible action to bring this to the next level. Release anything that is um, a fear or maybe again, if you're um, just exhausted and, and this is kind of feeding into that procrastination. So I said, release any fear or any set, uh, sense of exhaustion that's feeding procrastination, act and move now. So we're all guilty sometimes of thinking of how difficult something will be and that actually then makes us tired and then it makes us stress and then we grab the remote and watch TV. <laughs> so why not think, all right, I'm just gonna give it a, ch a chance today. Let's see, maybe today is different. We're gonna try it, we're gonna see what will happen. I'm not gonna prejudge it. I'm just going to allow things to be what they will be. 
Last piece, uh, I felt very much that sensation. Uh, if you've ever been in a cafe or out, out in public and you know someone's watching you, that's what I felt. You're being noticed, you're being watched, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. The star card would bring about this sort of energy, the lovers, the two of cups, for instance. Um, what do you wanna do with the attention? Are you also acting uh, sort of in, on your best behavior? If you're at work, if you're at school, if you're in public, just assume that all ears and eyes are tuned into what you're saying and act accordingly. Say things that you don't mind being said again, act in a way that you would be okay if it was reported to other people. Uh, basically, just, just sort of lead by example. And when you act in that way, then you're not gonna have anything to hide and it won't be a big issue. Um, but now let's assume that somebody comes to you because they're noticing you. This could be for a job, for love, for friendship. What you need to figure out is what do I wanna do with this? So state interest or disinterest, either way, set intentions, and then establish boundaries. Something that, by the way, if you need some help with, you should listen to my mid-month creative, which I just did yesterday. Um, I believe it was the second portion of it, because um, I, I did looking at boundaries and I looked at kind of dealing with ambiguity or the unknown. So it's for everybody, so you can feel free to watch it. And I did put time codes in that. So feel free to take a look at that if you, if you need some additional assistance. I'll see if anything comes through specifically for you, Libra, today. Okay, so really great messages overall. The hummingbird tells me that you have the ability to navigate well. I didn't write that, but as I kind of look at all the messages around uh, navigation and memory and mind over matter, that's one of the things that I think um, I should have mentioned, so I'm saying it now. And the other thing is that you can make quick movements, quick adjustments, um, and you can, you can move faster and more kind of um, adeptly than you think you might be able to. So just open yourself up to that. If you miss anything, don't worry. We're gonna do a mini review of everything that I just talked about at the end. I'll also post this on social media, usually by tomorrow. I have to summarize yesterday and today's and I'll, I'll try to get both of those up by tomorrow. And uh, so it's a good place to sort of remind you to follow me if you haven't already on Instagram. Um, Instagram's actually great because for those of you not on TikTok, I also, I also do my cross posting of TikTok stuff to Instagram. But then I also put all of these cards here that I'm stacking up. Um, on that platform as well. Here on the YouTube, I do it on the community tab. On my website, I will post it and Facebook and Twitter. So you can kind of take your, your pick of which platform you like the most, but I do actively post on all of those. So let me just flash the um, username for that. It's my name, at Nicholas Ashball. TikTok, I'm starting to do short form readings and that, like I said, I post that on Instagram. So I'll do like a weekly three card poll for three minutes. It's really short. It's easy to digest. It's a nice compliment to what I do here. And it's nice for the in-between work. Twitter is an Ashbrock. Okay. One last thing before we get into uh, pulling the cards, consider hitting the like button and subscribing. If you've never done that before, it helps the channel grow and um, it helps new people discover this. So if you like what I'm doing and you want to help this channel grow, a simple uh, one like per video. And again, if you haven't ever subscribed, think about it. It doesn't cost anything. It's the same as following on another platform. Um, it just is a different word here on YouTube. So thanks to everybody who already obviously has followed me. Many of you are already channel members and I appreciate your love and support. And I couldn't do this without you. So thanks. All right, sun, rising moon, Venus, and any aspect of the chart that you happen to know. Here we go, Libra, let's see what's coming through. This deck seems to love to have uh, two cards sticking together. And yeah, I'm using the lights here deck.
All right. Let's look and see what's coming through and make some sense of the month ahead. Sound good? All right, you're, um, you've got a dual catalyst this month. We'll start with the Mystic card, which I think is gorgeous. Um, so we have this butterfly and it looks like a couple of um, sort of eye drops, if you will, or like teardrop shaped eyes here. Um, so when I'm looking at the Mystic card, transformation basically is what we're seeing with this, of course, right? So this is a chance for you to spread your wings, to try something new and to step into that state of actually um, transforming. So when we're looking at the butterfly, it's already gone through the chrysalis, the metamorphosis. So what this is telling me for you is that change has happened, but for many of you, this month is about breaking through the, the shell, the limits, the illusions that you know, you're more stuck than you think you may be. So give yourself a chance to sort of spread your wings and um, also let other people see the change that's happened within. We see our own change sometimes first, um, or maybe if you're in denial, someone else feels like there's something that's happened that, that you might wanna talk about. I want you to honor that and kind of lean into whatever change is presenting itself. And then we have the bridge card here and it was on its side and it was underneath, it was kind of a hidden element here. There may be a special connection that's coming through, a mentor, a teacher, um, a person that can actually make it happen. It's like the, I've talked before about a gatekeeper, but this one's different. This one's someone that's a helper. So uh, the question with this, since it was kind of on its side is, are you willing to reach out and ask for help? Are you willing to receive help if it's offered? Are you ready to look beyond your own sort of energy to see who else might be able to, to kind of like be a steward or foster some of this energy that you want uh, to, to see grow? So strength in numbers is what we're seeing with the bridge card and also keeping connections open. So if there's anyone that you need to walk away from this month, and I don't, we have the justice card, it's possible. Um, so what we don't have is, uh, and we have, no, we don't have eight of cups, okay. Eight of, this is basically what I would kind of ascribe to the eight of cups card, which is leaving the door cracked open. And so for many of you that may decide to like take a sabbatical or leave of absence, this would be that sort of thing where it's like, I need space, I need time, but I don't know if I want like this to be permanent. I just need to kind of clear out what my thoughts are. Try to figure out what you want before you ask for it, but you can leave open that door of opportunity or possibility to reconnect. Looks like the connection is really strong. Looks like you have a really sort of, um, I would say attractive energy this month, again, when, when it comes to people being interested in kind of like tapping into what it is that you have to offer. So I like what I see here with respect to both of these. And if you're trying something different, these two are also very auspicious um, that they came together in a pair. So this is the change and this is people receiving the change quite nicely, actually. We see the rainbow of colors, all, kind of all the different energies, all the different possibilities, they're open to it, okay? The hardest thing sometimes is just to say what you need to say. Once you've said that, then um, movement can happen. As we go to the center, we have two of swords. What do you want? That's really what this card is saying. What do you want to do? And if you're waiting for someone to tell you, they're not going to. And that's probably the frustrating piece, right? The frustrating piece is with the two of swords, it's the most um, ambiguous of all of the, sorry, I heard something moving in the kitchen. I think it's my keys, but it could be spirit. It's the most sort of frustrating of all the different um, minors because you're not gonna have a clear path. Normally with the, uh, with the two of swords, you would see a woman and well, she is here too. She's in front of a path. But in this one, what we see is words from other people or thoughts in her own mind causing this sort of like distraction. And so that hibernation, that, that deep sleep, that meditation that we talked about with the hummingbird will come in handy with this. I want you to just go into your heart, into your sort of instinctual part of your head and just think what feels right. At the end of the day, if I had to choose which one feels the best, that's it. Don't overthink it. Um, the other thing with the Two of Swords is to take a look at something that maybe you've been trying to sweep under the rug. So if there's a person in your life and the behavior hasn't been quite great, um, if there's something that you've been avoiding because you're just afraid of what the ramifications would be, whatever the fear is, um, this is just really about taking the blindfold off, looking at it from a different angle and saying, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of this today. I can deal with this today. Okay, so um, I like the two of swords and it's basically just a call to action and, 
And it's telling you that because we have the three of wands right on top of it, you'll be all right. You'll be able to navigate. Remember the hummingbird moves quickly and adjusts quickly. So what we see with this is the ability to uh, make some changes happen in real time and um, look at what's possible. Three of wands, possibly one of my favorite cards because it's an indication that we don't see the ships on this one. That's interesting. We, we see someone with a surfboard, which means they may, may actually go out there and find the ship, but it's coming. They know it's coming. Um, so this is usually an indication, an early indication of success, um, phone call, email, some sort of physical um, uh, sort of manifestation that you start to see happening. So upon a decision, an utterance of a word, uh, an action that you take, almost immediately you start to see progress. So the fear holds you back. The decision and the action radically brings you forward and you think to yourself, why did I worry so much? Indeed, especially when we see these two. People are open, people will receive. You just have to set the call, okay? Um, let's go to the next card. Deep past, this is what we were talking about. Literally, she's in a bird's nest, right? <laughs> in this particular card. Um, and what's she doing there? She's healing her heart. She's resting a little bit. Like I said, the heart slows down and you take care of yourself. Um, so the card is reversed, which usually indicates four swords reversed that you're working rapidly or you're sleeping, but you're not feeling rest in that sleep either because of stress or because there might be something physiological going on. Um, whatever it is, we need to take a look at uh, sleep quality and quantity and adjust it to best suit your body and best suit your needs. You may need to work with a doctor on this. It could be something like you know, sleep apnea, it could be stress management, there could be something else gone, uh, going wrong. So if you can't kind of shift it in the right direction, definitely talk to uh, your physician and make sure that you get that where it needs to be. But this is basically saying, it's good to sleep, it's good to rest, it's good to meditate. And no matter how much of a, <laughs> if you think you're a superhero, you're gonna need that eventually. Caffeine, nicotine, whatever you're doing, it's not going to be enough. Eventually the body will say sleep. Um, Four of Swords is also a really nice card for letting go. And for some of you, you're at a close, you're, you're, you're nearly there. Let me just pull the camera down for a second. We've got a lot of cards of transition here. This one is like not quite being ready. You got a lot of swords today. Um, two of swords, four of swords, six of swords, and justice. Justice is upright, which means you know what to do. You're probably going to do it, and it's for the best reason since upright is an affirmative card. So these two, that's starting to let it go. It's less energy from the other person. This can be literally creating distance, ghosting. Um, the two together show that someone's probably exiting, but it could be in a quiet sort of way. Sometimes people either don't have the capacity to say it, or maybe you're intimidating, or maybe there's something going on where it's just, you're not reciprocating, you're not listening, and, uh, or the other person isn't, so you just decide to move on. So I see a moving on sort of energy where it's like, that is not worth it, I'm just gonna ignore the call, ignore the email, and focus on something else because that's not a good investment of time and energy. And I support that if you need to. There are some things that are not worth it. Um, so on the internet, it would be the equivalent of like, yeah, like someone that's trolling someone, why get involved in the conversation? It's not going to It's not gonna solve anything. It's just going to be an expenditure of energy. Um, and you need to conserve your energy this month. You need to spend it in a wise way. All right, uh, Six of Swords. This could be for some of you deciding to move, um, to travel, of course. And the only thing that's kind of interesting in this one is it seems like you're kind of pulled a little bit between the two directions. We see three crows at the front. We see a few birds behind her. I saw that energy of looking at things from a higher perspective, but getting a little dizzy. So it feels like some of you just need to kind of ground what it, where it is you wanna go. As long as you know where you're going, that dizziness goes away, the clarity comes in and you start to feel this sense of, okay, let's take flight, let's let this happen. Um, Six of Swords, ultimately, I like the card actually. It, um, it shows moving on, moving to something new and a little bit of maybe mourning, like whenever, even if you're you know, at a job and you get like a higher title, you, you, you sometimes think, God, it was easier when I had that. It could be that simple. Um, if you're getting married, you mourn your single life. If you get divorced, you mourn your married life. We always go through these states of nostalgia and looking back. So understand that wherever the trigger is for you, it's natural and it's part of the expansion process. Once you mourn it, then you can actually move, move forward. Um, and that's why we should never negate or sweep under the rug the, ne the necessary process of mourning. Um, so just understand why you feel that way, decide what you wanna do about it. Again, setting intentions and, and boundaries and stating what you want, it's gonna be really important. All right, 
because as we go into your headspace this month, the crowning card, we have the Eight of Pentacles, great card. The Eight of Pentacles was reversed. So the one thing that I would say for you is a decision on how, how serious are you? Because this is a card that shows a lot of potential, a lot of growth. Um, of any of the investment cards, I really love the Eight of Pentacles because it means, and with it reversed, it means you're gonna do something for yourself. Could mean returning to, um, going back to get your high school diploma, get a college diploma, get a certification, learn something that you wanted to, finish a project that you started, um, work together with someone to, again, it, to me, I'm getting completion from this because it's reversed completion and then reinvestment, taking some resources and putting them somewhere that you really feel like you wanna see growth. It's almost a guarantee with Eight of Pentacles, as long as you don't like, you know, get distracted and not finish that you're gonna see something fertile come through from this. So I approve of whatever it is that you're working on. We see many moons here. We see at least one full kind of like lunar cycle, new moon to new moon. And interestingly enough, we have in your environment, the moon, which we'll talk more about and guess what? different deck, but the same sort of thing. I see at least, you know, it's gonna be half or a full cycle because this went from um, new to full and the other one went from new to new. So it's at least a month or two that you're looking at for some of these changes to happen. So be patient, but they're already happening because we have the three of wands at the center and we have the eight of pentacles here. And the butterfly is just reminding you that metamorphosis is done. You just have to like, let it go and decide what you wanna say and then let people have a chance to deal with it and then let new things fruitfully come through because of that. We have the, um, the King of Wands in the near future, um, upright, super auspicious because he's upright. This is the King Boss card if you, if you were gonna pull one. Um, so, you know, I love the Queen of Wands, but King of Wands really has it together. I like that we have an active walking King that's kind of comfortable in who he is. Um, there's no sense of pomp and circumstance here. We have his sort of like, spiritual animal back there, but he's sort of just holding himself with grace and dignity. So this month, what does this mean in practical terms? It means that um, people are gonna be looking to you for a decisive sort of approach. You need to make a decision. You need to lead by example. You need to manage your own life. Um, let people come to you. The card is upright, so I'm actually not really worried about you overstepping, but just focus on um, a clear mind, clear actions and management overall. And I think you're gonna be solid. And because we have three of wands, king of wands, and the eight of pentacles, uh, you can really make some stuff manifest. So this is a good time to work, to work hard, and to see progress happen. All right. So we like the king of wands and we like the placement. Um, yes, there could be a Leo coming into your life too, because we see the line there in the background. Uh, I also like that he has the very clearly the torch here. Sometimes we forget that wands are just like that. They are fire, there's a torch. Uh, it kind of looks like the Statue of Liberty torch, in fact. Um, so what are you doing to kindle your fire, your flame, your intensity? How are you inspiring others? Um, and you know, I think I talked yesterday a little bit about, well, I've talked, th there's a theme this month that I've noticed. Like uh, we talked a little bit about infatuation a few signs ago. Yesterday, we talked about themes of like revenge and instead trying to see redemption. And with this one, the focus with the King of Wands is on really just finding your, your, your passion, your flame and allowing that to be enough. So a lot of times we spend time idolizing others, um, putting time and energy into punishing others, um, obsessing or kind of like thinking a lot about others. And the fallacy with all of that is that you're thinking that the power exists elsewhere. You are the, you're the battery, you're the power, you're the sun. Don't plug into other people's batteries or suns because it's a surefire way to get disappointed, get frustrated, et cetera. So he's really reminding you that you are your own king of wands, you are that, you are the torch. So use it wisely and keep that flame going, okay? Let's look at what's going on. And this is, this is what I felt with the hummingbird. We have the knight of swords in your ego position showing rapid movement. He's running towards that motorcycle. Um, the birds are flying. All we see here is are signs of movement, movement, movement. There's even a sort of like, I need to catch up sort of energy with this, needing to get uh, ahead of things. So I would say this month, be very aware, very awake and, and start moving quite a bit um, each and every day, physically, literally, um, spiritually, energetically, keep things in motion. That's the key. Um, and 
I think great things will come of that. Knight of Swords would be the one that initiates conversation, would be very, um, also kind of like to the, to the letter of the law and what's expected. When I look at a knight, a knight should act in accordance to a certain code. So follow the rules, um, be the first to initiate communication if you need to, reciprocate communication if communication is initiated. Um, yeah, move and be receptive and act according to rules and regulations and you should be fine, especially since we have the justice card. And I saw those sort of hidden eyes on you. Just make sure you're following policy. There's nothing to be uh, worried about and you're gonna be all right with that, okay? In the environment, we have uh, the Knight of Wands. Some of you may be partnering up. We've got a king and a knight here. The knight would be working for the king. You may be hiring a new employee. You may have uh, taken on an intern. Uh, you may be working with uh, a child in your life that you're mentoring or teaching. Uh, there's someone in your life that's looking to you for some assistance, but they're stubborn, aren't they? Because this Knight of Wands is reversed. I talked about this the other day. We see the stallion and we see the drum. She beats to her own sort of, or she, she uh, dances to her own drum beat here. So um, what I would say for you is to try to inspire, uh, to lead and to leave open the potential for them to come to you for advice. This is the person that you want to kind of like come to you because if you try to lay down the law too much, you'll push that kind of person away. Now, if this is a romantic uh, connection and indeed it can be when you have two court cards in the same element or same uh, sign here, what I would say for you is that there's a definite gap. It's either age, maturity, or, or, or even maybe even like a cultural difference. There's this big shift between the two of you. And so you're going to have to find a way to bridge the gap. And <laughs> we have the bridge right here. And we do see that it could be this, this hand looks a little younger. This looks a little older. Who knows? Definitely coming from do, two different places. It could indicate two different countries, two different cultures. There's something going on where you're going to have to bridge the gap. But there's some positive changes and strides that can be made with that kind of energy. Um, so... I think both sides have something to offer. Age, experience, wisdom. He's really patient. You can tell he's not going to lose his cool. This one is just making some noise and having some fun and running around like a stallion and not focusing as much. So I definitely see a little bit of differing styles here. So in relationships that matter, listening is going to be key. One partner's listening better than the other, um, giving the other partner some freedom and finding a way to kind of meet in the middle. There's not a lot of communication happening between these two. It's a lot of non-verbal because we didn't get um, a sword there kind of coming between it. We do have the Knight of Swords. Um, so for some of you also, there, you know, we actually have Knight of Swords, <laughs> Knight of Wands, and the Page of Swords. There's a lot of um, energy around you. This leadership that we saw with the King of uh, Wands is gonna be important. With all of these, sort of energies around you, I would say the most important thing for you is to know who you are and what you're trying to do. Because if you don't, some other people are gonna come in and maybe make that decision for you. So definitely know what you need to, um, <laughs> what you're trying to do. Um, in the environment, uh, we're looking at people that don't listen as well as you do. So that's where your, your patience will be tried a little bit. So use your communication skills, take a break if you need to, um, come back a few times and keep repeating and eventually it should come through. If needed though, Page of Swords in the, in the necessary action, hope, fears, and opportunity is saying, if you need to ground this, because this is that person kind of way up high and dizzy, this could be the other person that I was seeing in my channel um, messages. I would say you need to pull them down to earth because the card is reversed here. And there's a fine line that you're gonna be walking between insulting them and kind of like getting things right on track. I like the page reverse though, because um, page of swords reverse is just direct enough without it ever really causing trouble. So it's just saying like, hey, we really need to talk and this is what, what's going on. Or I know you're busy, but if this doesn't get managed today, there's gonna to be, um, to be some issues. So get, give them the, the, or even just saying, this isn't working. People are saying that, I wanna help you. Are you ready? Um, sometimes people need to hear that, like that they're not being received well. A good friend can do that and will do that and will take a little bit of the heat if they need to. Just say, hey, I'm your friend. I wouldn't say this otherwise. If I didn't care, I wouldn't tell you. Um, so sometimes people need to hear that too. Ultimately, you've got a decision to make this month um, with the Justice card, Libra, and this is you. So the fact that she's upright is really good. Um, now, we see the shadow. Hey, Apollo. <laughs> we see the shadow of the sort of feeling of, do I want to stay? Do I want to go? Justice reverse is very strong. 
she comes through and she just says what she wants. It's like, no, I don't want to do this or absolutely this and not that. So you have that kind of like, it's almost like this lion or tiger in the background. You have that sort of inner ability to, to bring it out. There's a quiet energy towards you right now. And it feels like there's still a little bit of contemplation. Where do I sit? What do I want to say? How do I want to say this? So my only advice to you, Libra, is once you've made the decision to find a little bit of the fire that we have with Justice Reverse, open your eyes just like she has and say what you need to say. Um, because again, because I'm Libra, I can say this. Sometimes Libra thinks a lot or too much. So here's the cool thing about it though. Once we've looked at everything, you know exactly that when you make that decision, okay, this is it. I'm just telling you that it, it feels like it's already done. I feel like you've done ample research with the Eight of Pentacles. This is, this is looking at the small fine print and, and having done more than enough. This is having thought it through more than enough. So it feels like by the end of this six to eight week period, you're ready. So don't, don't delay and find a little bit of the fire that we see here with Justice Reversed and just say it, okay? If you say it with love and if you say it with confidence, we have the bridge that keeps coming through to remind you that it's gonna be okay. Because you're so highly sensitive, sometimes you overthink communication, uh, so don't. This is a good time to just put it out there. All right, let's expand the forecast. We're gonna look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. All right, we have holy love here in your um, in your health card. Health is mind, body, and spirit. And for you, this is a reminder that uh, you are loved. You are love. Love is around you. You should be putting that passion and that flame in everything that you're doing. Some of you may be connecting more with spirit. When I look at this, this is definitely spirit. So if you give yourself time to sleep, to rest, and to meditate, wow, things start to open up for you. So definitely make some time and space for that. If you're not feeling unconditional love, which is another way that I would probably caption this card, that's another important component this month. How much do you love yourself? How much do the people that you spend the most time around you love and support you? How do you feel about these sort of key relationships and energies? Even just the job that you're doing, everything, there should be this sense of love and passion. That's the main thing here. Love with a capital L, right? Let's look specifically at the cards and see if there's some additional messages um, just for health. So quality of sleep or lack of sleep is the main thing and it's in the deep past and making more time for rest and also for um, just getting out and having some space of your own. And you know, a as a result of the pandemic, many of us have just probably craved more of that if we've been working with our family or our friends and been at home. Um, you might need that space. You might need to go outside. You might need to take your laptop or your iPad and go outside. Um, some of you are feeling that fear or that um, insecurity getting back to work. And maybe you miss the privacy. But the Six of Swords is time on your own. It's time away. So it feels like just like I saw the hermiting energy with the, the hummingbird, you're going to have to figure out how to make peace with the time that you have to spend with others and the time that you need to recharge. Um, let me see what else is coming through for you. Uh, with the, in the environment, I think this has to do with mental stress here. The Knight of Wands in reverse it can be persistent thoughts because of the work that you're doing, because of the activities that you're engaged in. And I would say, give yourself time to decompress, to let some of that go. It seems to be a lot of heavy energy kind of here. So um, maybe you need to talk to other people for a change around you. It doesn't have to be a professional, just a friend that will listen and just say, hey, I just need to talk. Um, and then just finding a way to decompress from work stress, et cetera. And some of you may be deciding on something like to do with your medical, like th this can be an, um, an optional surgery or whatever, because justice holds the sword. There's, there's a couple of options. So just explore all options, do a lot of research when it comes to that. Overall, your cards are pretty good. Um, if you haven't had an eye checkup for a little bit, get one. Uh, we have the two swords at the center and she's blindfolded. So anything that you've been avoiding, but particularly like your eyes, you want to take a look at that. All right. Let's look at your wealth, career, life purpose card here. We have the moon. It says, um, take note of intuitive messages. Yes, you're being guided for sure. And the moon has come through a couple of times. Um, so <laughs> in different ways, not specifically in the card, but when we look at how long it's going to take to make something happen. And this is definitely a work or resource card. So again, we have new moon to new moon in this one. And for some of you, I would say 
this new change, if it's like finding a new job, stating an intention, finishing a project, starting something, feels like you need one to two months. Um, so give it time. The moon, of course, also has the connotations of the tarot card, which I've talked about quite a bit in, I think it was yesterday's reading. So um, what the moon reminds us is a few things here. We'll just walk through it again. Uh, it is a revelation. It reveals things that we'd rather not see, but need to see in order to heal, in order to be better. So it shines a light on necessary actions. It reveals the animal nature within us. That's why you would see the dog and the wolf on the moon card. Um, it, re it reveals things that we wish we didn't feel, but we feel. And so once we deal with those um, shadow sides, then we can transmute them, bring them into the light. It's deeply intuitive, which is why we have take note of intuitive messages. It's the rawest sort of form of our intuition, the instinct side, that's why you see the wolf. And it's kind of bringing us between uh, what we're expected to do and what we know we have to do. And that's why you see the dog and the wolf on that card. So I just kind of broke down the symbology of the moon card. Um, I'm seeing it in my head there. Um, ultimately with the moon card, there's also the path in front of it or behind the two dogs, which is just saying, once you get through that kind of like moment of, I know I need to do it, I know what's expected, I'm gonna do what I need to do and you take the path, well then you just solve the two of swords. Then you can move, then things happen. And the moon is power. Especially this, we have the full moon in this card. Um, it's hard to see it because of the, the light there, but yeah, there you go. Um, so this is basically telling you now, once you command the energy of the moon, you can move the tides, you can do amazing things. Um, in the um, Afro goddess deck, I believe the moon card is actually parting the sea. So think about that. There's a capacity to really create changes, right? Um, what does this mean with work uh, and career? Okay. so. The moon card could mean that there's territorial issues coming up for you, uh, that you and coworkers, you and family, you and whomever you care about in your life, there's a comp competition or competitive sort of tug of war. This can even be like um, parent and child. Sometimes the parent wanting to vicariously live control or affect the child's path, uh, whomever it is in your life, this is basically validating the path that you need to take and just telling you to stand up for yourself. If it's at work, there could be some weird behavior going on um, where people are not acting according to the rules and the regulations. And I saw that that stuff is gonna see the light of day. And that was something that I talked about the other day, okay? So just walk the high path. For some of you, it's time to move on um, because it seems like you could have awakened to something that you didn't want to see. Um, you've maybe given it the requisite time the requisite space, and now you're just thinking, is this enough for me? Only you can answer that. The scales have to balance out though. And right now, um, it looks like some of you are ready to make an important shift in your life, okay? Do what's best, address what's not working, and you're gonna see some really amazing things come through once you do that. Then put your energy into all the cool stuff. Um, and we see her writing, we see there's some magic there with the candle, we see just all the thoughts. So. Like I said, once you kind of really commit to it, some, some amazing things happen. Okay, I like what I see overall. Don't be afraid to talk to a lawyer and um, edit any sort of contracts or agreements. That's why justice came through as well. And we have the editing card, the page of swords in reverse right underneath it. And she's literally looking at the fine print and this is the fine print. So before you sign anything this month, definitely look at all the, the details. I think that's important. Nothing really bad here um, coming through. I like that you've got eight of pentacles. That's actually quite auspicious. Um, but there is something with movement, traveling, or moving on because of Four of Swords, Six of Swords, and Justice. So make your mind up, and then everything's going to start to um, to come into focus then. All right, let's look at love and relationships here. We have Lady Portia, Divine Order. It says, do what you feel is right, an important lesson is unfolding. So again, trusting yourself, not necessarily always having the benefit of mom, dad, teacher, doctor, etc. There's somebody... There's, there's something inside that's sort of saying, I know what I need to do. So follow that in, intuition, okay? Um, so let's look at relationships in the three different areas that I always like to look at it. If you're in a relation, it, relationship, if you're looking for love, or if you're not really focused on it, but curious how it might relate to you. So for those of you in a relationship this month, distance and, and a little bit of space is gonna be necessary. Because with the, um, the Four of Swords and the Six of Swords, we see that need to have time to yourself, space to yourself. Um, we saw the age and maturity gap. We saw this, this need to sort of let the other person figure it out a little bit. 
You can't show them. You can't save them all the trouble. Sometimes it's more important for them to figure that out. You got a lot of people that are around you. If you're trying to start up a business or something this month, even though this is not about being in a relationship, um, I feel like there's just a lot of people. So you might be torn a little bit between work, um, you know, business, and then this, this other relationship, and you're kind of MIA. And that might be the biggest challenge is how to be present for your partner, okay? If you're looking for love this month, you have many options. Like you've got almost... You've got four court cards here. So what do you want? That's really what the universe is asking you. What do you want? Because if you're clear on that, we see manifestation setting. And if you're not, then there's a lot of blurriness here. And I can't really tell you which to go to because it feels like you could home in a little bit more on what it is you're looking for um, for that to happen. So I would say be more specific, be um, optimistic, and um, really state the intention that you are absolutely ready for that to come in as well and that helps bring it in a little bit faster. If you're not looking for love, uh, good, because we have eight of pentacles in justice, make a decision to finish something. Uh, you're still gonna have a lot of activity in your life, and I think the hermiting energy that I talked about a little bit earlier is gonna be important, figuring out how to sort of like, like a hermit crab, go out of your shell, come back in your shell, like when to, to sort of like show yourself and hide yourself, and I think that's gonna be key, because you're gonna have to socialize, Libra. There's no, there's no two ways around it. We see a lot of people coming in your life. Um, but for love opportunities this month, I'll, I'll say like, for those of you that are single and looking, there's a lot. Like the Knight of Swords is someone who would probably come to you um, and state intention. Uh, the Knight of Wands is someone that would flirt and would expect you to come to them. And then the other one, the Page of Swords reverse talks too much. Um, I like the King of Wands, if it's not you because that's someone who's mature, but they're a little bit older than expected. So you have a lot of youthful energy um, and you have one really mature person that's popping through, but I don't know if that's your type. So um, so there you go. There's a lot of options and I feel like you could, you could be more specific, okay? Uh, for everybody, the fact that there's all these energies around you is also just about grounding yourself, protecting yourself, stating intention like we talked about earlier. All right, final card, trajectory. Uh, before we get into the next portion of the reading, we have the Divine Physician, Archangel Raphael, actually one of the angels that I uh, pray to before I begin this reading. So great to see Raphael coming through. It says, thank you, Raphael, for shining your divine light upon my healthy body. So choosing health and choosing healthy options and deciding to do things uh, for your higher good. That's really what's coming through with Raphael. And also this sort of Divine Physician deciding to really take some positive movement towards being healthier and being happier overall, I think is what we see here. So you're on the right path. The fact that that's in destiny for you tells me th the trajectory is heading towards something better. So keep on uh, moving in that direction. Let's go ahead now and do a quick review. And then we're going to go a little bit deeper and take a look at your, um, your soul path. And let me just write down a couple of thoughts before I do that. I always like to do that to make sure I don't forget anything. Uh, I always like to do a quick audit here. One thing that I'm not seeing is any cups, right? So we have tons of swords, um, a decent amount of wands. We have a major arcana with justice, but we have no cups, right? All right, so what's going on with your heart, with relationships? So um, show us, show us the heart and show us relationships. Basically your emotional side. Um, I definitely wanna look at that. I like your resources. I like that we got eight of pentacles. Um, I want to understand justice a little bit more. So I want to take a look at uh, the four of swords, six of swords, justice. It feels like you've pulled back. You've spent time. You've got a decision. So what I'm going to ask is, what's your decision? Like, what can you do to make the decision or to, uh, to balance things out a little bit more? And then we'll do, of course, our wild card. And don't worry, you get a chance at the end to ask a uh, a fourth question, a final question after we meditate. All right, let's do a quick review. If you just joined, perfect timing. Even if you've been here, stick around because these messages um, will kind of like build on one another. So we have the hummingbird as your spirit totem today. Um, it's one of the smallest birds on the planet, but it's amazing because of this. It's a very stealthy kind of animal. It has the ability to fly in all directions, including upside down, um, forward, backward, side, all of that and upside down. And they remind you to look at a situation from all those different angles, not just what's right in front of you, not just a four of cups moment. Uh, they travel over 2000 miles or 3200 kilometers per year. And it's a, reminding, a reminder to you to go the distance, 
to, to really push for whatever your dream goal or aspiration is. They're not so adept at socializing. In fact, they're pretty territorial and they're, they're very hermit-like uh, when it, with exception to mating. Uh, they like to eat alone, they like to travel alone, and they pretty much like to just be alone. Uh, so you're gonna have to kind of go between that, that hermit energy and the ability to work with others. Um, hermit is not bad, it's an important piece to, to self-discovery, but it can be too much if, if used in excess. You are known for your excellent communication, but the sleep and the rest and the, the privacy that we talked about is probably what you need to excel this month. Um, recharge, especially if you're highly sensitive or if you work as a teacher, a nurse, a counselor, a consultant, anyone that's doing a lot of time and energy with other people, spending a lot of time and energy, I should say. Um, the hibernation type sleep that they have, fun fact, is called torpor, I think it's called, or Turper. Um, it's basically where their body goes into this deep um, meditative state, slowing to one fifteenth of the metabolism, and um, sixty percent of their their sort of uh, energy is going into a state of conservation. And we didn't get the six of pentacles, but there's choices this month when it comes to how much and how fully you want to commit to something so that you don't basically go overboard, right? Um, take time to meditate, manage your uh, resources, plan, and really kind of work with that six of uh, pentacles energy. And that's, that is the key to working with others is you don't have to give um, 110%. You just have to figure out who to invest in, how often, and who really appreciates it. Raise your frequency, as I almost throw the cards. Raise your frequency because every time that I see the hummingbird, it reminds me to think in a higher uh, and more sort of elevated way and that's why I almost felt dizzy uh, after seeing that in dreams and meditations because they move so fast and their energy is so high that it's kind of like if you've ever been around a really uh, elevated teacher, you can almost feel like the energy is too much. So hummingbirds remind us to ground ourselves and to, um, to really think about what's possible. Um, you can make some changes in real time, radically shifting your trajectory. So just like the hummingbird can move in all these directions, it can actually even hover. You can, you can make some really quick movements that affect your long-term trajectory, which should be about healthier and happier choices. Hummingbird brain is pretty darn big based on the size of their body. It's double the percentage that ours is, and it's the biggest of most birds on the planet. So uh, it's reminding you of the importance of mind over matter. Put your mind into any task. You're gonna see the progress that you've been desiring. Thoughts are alchemic. They can create, they can destroy, they can transmute. Choose to create and transmute, I would say. Um, words are a way to infuse light and energy into those thoughts, and then just take some action. Believing is seeing, believing creates reality. Um, know where you're blocked, decide what to do about that block, and then really just focus on the, the forward momentum. So that dizziness that I saw shows you the power of the Seven of Cups, but also the importance of grounding. And grounding is a key piece of successful sort of like psychic work in your life. So make sure that you also bring some of this down to the planet. When you get a great idea, write it down. That's a great way to ground it. Um, and make sure that you do something about that afterwards. Um, tangible action is the key to success here. If you're afraid, if you're exhausted, um, if, you, if you're doing anything that's causing procrastination, move away from that and just take the first step, something that I say a lot. I got the sense of being watched. So you're being noticed. Um, it's time to decide what you want to do with that. Let people know if you want them or if you don't. Tell them what you want from them. Um, and establish boundaries if you don't want something from them. All of these things are important, okay? The change has already happened. What's required is letting someone know who you are, what you want, where you're going. There's gonna be love and acceptance here. That's what we see, change and acceptance of the change. Uh, but you have to reach out or you have to accept the, the sort of helping hand that's coming through with the bridge card. Pick a path um, and start moving. And it's basically the answer to the moon card. And we're not, we're not always going to have every little piece of energy or information in front of us. We have to kind of instinctively go in and decide this, this is what feels right. Once you make a decision, movement and signs and synchronicities start to open up for you. Three of Wands is one of the best cards you could pull. So this transmuted by this 
is really good and bookended by these two is great. So this is saying, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna go for it. This is saying, all right, now I made the decision, things are happening. Then we have letting something go and, and really just focusing on what you can control here. And that's, that's your sort of like three card pull in the middle of this telling it's gonna be all right. The thing that's missing is sleep and rest. The thing that's op offered up to you is growth, is expansion, is possibly um, a chance to do even more. It, you might you might have a chance to sign a contract because this is definitely that, but edit it before you sign it for sure, um, based on the arrangement of the cards here. With the uh, King of Wands, you've already thought this through enough. You're gonna be an apt, uh, perfect leader, but you've gotta start to take some action. The Knight of Swords is here and it feels like there's a catching up energy that's happening with it. Knight of Wands in the environment, don't overthink. There might be people around you also that just don't get it the first time. Try different ways. The Hummingbird goes in all the different angles, so you might have to try it from different angles. Edit, revise, shorten. Brevity is key with the um, Page of Swords. Get in, get out of a conversation. If you're gonna say something that, that's difficult, keep it to the smallest part so it doesn't get misconstrued. A justice card, finally, not just landing on a decision, but stating that decision so that other people can receive it and celebrate it or know what to do next. All right, next piece. Um, we've got this love energy that's coming through in health. You should feel a sense of being loved. You should love yourself. There should be something, you should love what you're doing. If this is missing in any way, shape or form, then what we're seeing right now is an encouragement to find a place where you can, um, you, you can you can dig what you're doing a little bit more, even though this isn't in your work card, it's definitely a part of that. Looking in the mirror and loving what you see, definitely a piece of this too, unconditional self-love. Um, when we look at just at your health energy this month, I keep harping on the sleep card and the rest card and the meditation card because it's the most important piece and it's the foundation to this whole spread. And if that's missing, this is a house of cards and it won't stand up. Speak what's on your mind. It's important to, um, to create some balance. If something's wrong, you need to write the wrong with the justice card. And that's going to help you be happier and healthier as well. Um, space, uh, traveling and kind of just having time to yourself. All of these are important as well. All right. When we're looking at wealth, territorial energy and any sort of um, lack of integrity or not telling the truth, this stuff needs to be dealt with sooner than later. You're gonna be able to do that though with this leadership card and this outspoken energy. You can also uh, escalate the issue if you need to. Ultimately, many of you have to make a choice. We're gonna look at it in just a second and see what that decision may be. Um, but it feels like some balance needs to happen. You have a lot of power with the moon card, but there can also be fear and frustration. So we'll sort it out when we look at the soul path in a moment. Divine order. Everything is happening in its divine order. Everything's unfolding the way it should be. Um, so in a relationship, if something is ending or if some new energy is coming in, it's exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. The thing that I'm noticing as I just look at the whole spread here is you're preoccupied with the, with the um, Eight of Pentacles. You may be torn in other directions a bit. I think you're gonna make a lot of successful strides when it comes to all the other stuff going on in your life. It feels like relationships are just one of the things that are out of balance this month. There's a lot going on. Your health, your career, your sort of just general happiness, you need to balance that stuff out first. And I'm giving you, I mean, you don't need my permission, but I'm giving you encouragement to put yourself first this isn't selfish, there's nothing really selfish in this spread, but put yourself first so that you're okay. Um, when you're okay, the relationship will be okay, but until you are, it won't be. So when it comes to relationships, it all begins with you and it needs to be balanced. And finally with Raphael, healing is possible, that's the great thing with this. So if you decide to stay and work something out, Justice and Raphael together portend good things. All right, let's go ahead now and go a little deeper into the questions that I wrote down here. We're gonna look at um, relationships, the heart. Why didn't we get any cups? Spirit, that's what I want to know. What's going on with the heart space right now? Okay. Um, thank you so much. I saw I got a few stickers while I was doing the review. I don't want to interrupt my flow, but I appreciate those of you that just do stickers. All right, let's look now at what's going on here with the heart space. What do we need to know? Libra. Hmm. Ten of swords. All right, so some of you are healing. You're getting past something. Um, the Ten of Swords can also be avoiding an argument, avoiding something that you don't want to deal with. What I like about this one is we do not see someone on the ground in a pool of blood with swords in her back. We see someone that is on the rebound, that is moving on, that has integrated the messages, that um, is listening to herself, not all the crows around her. 
So you're healing, you're recovering, you're focusing on the horizon. It's okay. That's why the that's why we didn't get a lot of energy around the heart. And that's why you got a lot of swords cards this month. Not just not just the court cards, which makes sense, but because I'm reading for air, but we've got um, four of swords, six of swords, two of swords, and ten of swords. Everybody's favorite, right? Um, so the ten of swords is, a, is an end as much as a beginning. This particular artist um, did a great job. Chris Ann did a great job of showing the day, the day after. So normally what you see, or the dawn, normally what you see on the ten of swords is the breaking of a new day, but it's a dark sky with just a little bit of that breaking dawn, and then you see someone on the, on the ground that we assume is kind of like dead, but it's not really, it's, it's sort of symbolic. This is the rebirth energy coming through. So what we see is an, a chapter's ended and you're already ready for the new beginning. You're moving to the ace now. You're taking something uh, because you can reduce a 10 to one in numerology, one plus zero equals one. So it's a new beginning. So it feels like it, this is not an ace of cups. It's an ace of swords. It's a hidden ace of swords. So what you've decided to do in this month, many of you, is to focus more on taking that action and starting to move things forward, like the ace of the night. I'm going to do this, I'm gonna do this. It's more action-based, it's more uh, self-fulfillment, it's more um, opening your thoughts and your minds, and you still have a little bit of decompression. It feels like some of you are decompressing from 2020, decompressing from something that's fallen out of your life because of the six of swords, it can still be a mourning card for death or loss and you need to rebound before you put too much more energy into something else. So rebound um, and step, step away from the pain. This is a new beginning. This is her taking the, the swords and elevating them. So I like in this deck that the swords are all associated with crows um, so, or ravens. And so we can just see that heightened spiritual energy. See, it was for a higher purpose. And by the way, whenever you've had a 10 of swords moment, a terrible fight, um, terrible words that have been said or getting fired or whatever it is when you get the full stop when it's done when it's when it's that end at least you, get, you there's a sense of relief sometimes when it's just all said and done right when you've had a good good cry or a good ending and this is just the person saying okay that's done let's get on to better things okay so better things are ahead of you and if you're in a really good place the ten of swords is also just a little bit of a warning not to get triggered um by someone else's actions, by someone else's um, thought process. So I think the space cards that I that you were getting were for a purpose, the four of swords and the six of swords. You just not, you don't have to go down this path again, right? New day. All right, let's look at the decision. Why is justice at the end? What is she, what does she want us to decide on? What's what's available to us? All right, Libra, what's your decision? How can you make it well or best? Okay, we've got the tower. The towers come through so much. Uh, I feel like it came up at least twice yesterday. You'll have to look at the reading, but there were a couple towers yesterday. We've been getting it a lot. Um, so the decision for you is difficult because it's gonna change everything. We like the tower reversed, uh, at least on this channel. I like the, channel, or the, the tower reversed because this is you deciding that you're going to take an active role in making the necessary changes in your life. So. This is you understanding something is not ideal. This is you knowing that you have the capacity to do this, this, and this to change that and you doing it. Um, it's not waiting for the tower to happen. It's taking the tower to you and saying, all right, I'm gonna do this. We're gonna start to clean um, before the closet falls on me. <laughs> so you're cleaning up the mess right now. And it feels like to, to me, whatever you wanna do that's gonna make things be more in your control, more to your liking, you get a, you get a check on that. Yes, it's a good time to move. You've gotta be picky though. A move for the sake of moving, whether it's moving out of a relationship, into a, uh, moving into a house, moving into a job, whatever the movement is, there needs to be a premeditation with it thinking, all right, I'm thinking through this, this, and this, I'm ready for this. Like really, you're allowed to be Libra on this one. Weigh the options and decide what you want and then do it. You have to act quickly with the tower. So the action probably has to happen within the next couple of weeks, whatever it is you wanna change. You don't get to sit, otherwise the tower happens to you. So quick action is necessary. For those of you in a company that's merging, for instance, this is about having a conversation with your boss about what you'd like your new job to be. Also letting them know you've heard about the merger and that you don't wanna be the last at the table if something's gonna happen with your job. You need to be um, in the know. 
in a relationship, it's saying, we have a chance right now. We're either going to make it or break it. I want to make it. Are you with me? If you are, this is what I need to see. Anything, it's really that. It's just being outspoken, okay? Um, so be outspoken, be active, take that action within the next couple of weeks, and I think you'll be okay. And that's the decision is, are you ready and willing to kind of like deal with change? You know, newsflash, the change is happening. So it feels like you have to do it anyway, and you don't have to do it alone. If you're going to physically move from one place to another, hire a moving company, ask for help from, from friends and families, cash in on some of those, um, all of those favors that you've done for others while you've listened to them. This is your chance to say, hey, I need help. Um, and it's okay to ask for help, whatever the help may be. You don't have to do it alone, okay? And now let's look at your wild card, which is just whatever the universe wants to throw in that I've missed. Um, and then we will answer your final card after we meditate. So let's see what else, Libra, you need to know right now. Ten of Wands, good. It's it's going to happen. <laughs> we have the movement here. So here's we have a really kind of interesting energy. There's, a, there's been a disruption, it feels like, for some of you. And you're dealing with the disruption and the change. And it will be peaceful. We see here at both ends of the mountain. That's why I was at the top of the mountain feeling dizzy. This is your story right now, Libra. So this is um, something that happened unexpectedly, and it's a rebounding sort of energy. This is you picking up the pieces, dust, dusting off your shoulders and saying, all right, what am I going to do about this? And then moving forward, moving on. Um, and you're OK. It's the other side of the Ten of Swords. So I like what I see here. Um, but it does feel like movement is necessary. So if part of your question is, should I should I go for this? It looks like we haven't even gotten to the silent question, but that's kind of what I see with the Ten of Wands. Um, so I love that, OK? So hopefully um, hopefully that, that gives you a little bit of assistance there. When we look at your final question, I will pull all of these cards together again and look at them. And um, let's, uh, let's, let's get into the meditation quickly. Before I do that, a couple of quick notes. Uh, I noticed we have a, a good audience today. Bef before I meditate, before we look at your final question, if you could just hit the thumbs up. We have about half of the people that have liked right now. You can only like once, but I'd love to see some more. It helps again with discovery. If you've never subscribed, please consider doing so. And uh, as I said earlier, if you wanna see some of the handwritten cards, I'll, it'll take me until tomorrow for sure because I have a busy afternoon, but I will post them on social media. Um, you can look at that on Instagram, Facebook. You can also look at it here on the community tab. And I also do uh, shorts on TikTok if you want to look at that. All right. Let's, uh, and all of that information, I pinned a comment earlier. You can look at it there. Let's go ahead and meditate. For today's meditation, um, what I want to focus on is, um, sorry about that. What I want to focus on is creating the movement and making peace with the change that's going on in your life. Um, so the fact that we got the 10 of wands energy popping through, I wanna kind of help you figure out how to ease into change. So let's imagine that you've gotten to the top of a mountain and we're gonna meditate for two minutes, by the way, so just relax and then we'll do the final card. So see yourself um, at the top of a mountain, you've already climbed the hill. Um, so imagine that you're right up here this, this sort of vista. You're going to make your way down the hill as we do the meditation. But at the top of the hill, take a moment, or the top of this mountain, take a moment and just look at, look over your shoulder at how far you've come. The challenges that were in that winding path beforehand that might have brought about the, the Ten of Swords or the Tower, look back and think, I did it. Even if you're in the middle of some of it, think, I'm doing it. I'm surviving. I'm here today. I have enough energy to listen to this reading, and it's bringing me a sense of comfort. So hold yourself tall, look over your shoulders and say goodbye to what it is that you are finished with. And look into the future, see the sun rising and see what it is that you want to walk towards and feel this sense of um, with each step that you're taking, it's like recharging your battery, almost like a car, like a hybrid that um, as the wheels are moving, the engine gets charged. Um, the good news is it's all downhill. So you don't have to really expend a lot of energy. You just feel that it's getting easier now. With each step that you take, the sun is rising a little bit more. There's more energy coming towards you. You can feel your heart expanding. And just like the hummingbird waking up in the, mor in the morning, you, you get that sense that your wings are, are ready to uh, fly and to spread out. And if you want to even imagine that you have the wings of a butterfly or a hummingbird, you can see them behind you, kind of giving you additional speed as you make your way down the mountain. As I play the singing bowl here, I just want you to feel that things are going to move faster 
and more clearly and with more abundance than they have before. And then think about the question that you want to ask me and just hold it in your heart and mind while I play the bowl. And then I will pull a card right afterwards. Okay. So just enjoy and we'll pull a card in just a moment. See your heart um, beating, feel your wings expanding, feel your journey getting easier with each breath. Nice deep breath, let it go. Just as you can hear the pitter patter of my dog behind us, remember that everything starts with one small step towards whatever it is that you're trying to create. And feel now that you are further along on the journey, that your energy is higher, that you even feel a levity in mind, body, and spirit, like more joy, more pep in your step, more ability to just sort of get things done. Just enjoy this sort of new energetic high that we've been able to connect to. And um, as I kind of put everything back in this bag here, I want you to think of your final question that you have for me. It can be whatever it, we haven't had a chance to look at. Just hold it in your heart and mind. Meditate on it for a moment. And let me see what I'm picking up on. So we have the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is reversed, but it's still a very, very um, positive card. So if you look at this Wheel of Fortune, can you see how she's actually pulling at time space a little bit? Um, right there, she's pulling at the, uh, it's almost like time that you could kind of touch it. It's almost like a tesseract, right? So, and we see the Wheel of Fortune here is actually kind of like gambling chips. Um, so what we're seeing for you is that there could be a little bit of fear within about taking a chance on yourself. We did get an eight of pentacles here showing that this would be a wise investment to sort of like work on something that you care about, but we see a necessary change happening. And, and to me, the wheel is much like the world card. It may not be at the end. It's like halfway 10 instead of 21 um, or close, close enough to halfway. So what we're seeing is a journey that's, kind of like half completed, half halfway there, and you have to invest a little bit more. You have to take a couple of calculated risks. Of course, being Libra, you're going to balance out what's best for you. Make sure that you're, you're comfortable with whatever's at risk. But the Wheel of Fortune is pretty much a yes. The fact that it's reversed is telling me that um, you don't want to pull at your resources too much. Resource management has been a big piece of today. So you can do this, but I think you will benefit from support tutelage, advice, um, something, you know, some sort of partnership with someone else. I think that also you need to believe in yourself because this is a symbolic sort of thing here. Like, do you feel the value? The chips are coming towards you and the chips are laid out in a good place. So I would say if you don't believe in, in that, then I don't want to take a risk or a gamble on you. So you have to trust yourself. So it's a yes, but there's dot, dot, dot. There's a few caveats that, that are important. One, don't overextend your resources. You can do more with others. Two, if you don't believe in yourself, others will have a hard time doing it. Three, the wheel of fortune in many decks is called the wheel of the year, and it can take up to four seasons, just like the world card. So time is part of this. Time, investment, and belief will make it a yes, but if those things are lacking, it's already a no. So. Uh, you have to you have to believe you have to move forward. You have to kind of in, um, connect with other people, even though we got that sort of hermiting energy from the hummingbird. More can be done partnering with or accepting help from others. And it's, it's tricky sometimes. I know it. All right. So just a quick review of everything. I like your messages this month. Uh, 
But the soul space showed a really big shift. And I think this is where the powerful piece is. So for those of you that stuck around, this is the big idea. And this is the important piece. So coming on the heels of this month, we have the 10 of swords, but it's the 10 of swords, which is the morning after all that sort of shifting and changing has happened. It's once you've made that decision that I want to do something else. It's the awakening. She's awake. She got up. She's alive. Um, she's happy to be alive. There's some changes to be made. So for many of you, there's a necessary shift on the horizon. It came through a lesson that you maybe preferred to not have. Ten of Swords is a lesson we, we, we may not like, but it's a, a great teacher. So we got a, a teaching lesson that we've all been through. There's a necessary shift or change, and it can't be the same as what it was. Has to be different, in fact, for it to work with the tower, tower reversed. This change is good. It's going to bring you to places you never imagined. Um, because you had to make the change, because the universe stepped in and said, this isn't working, Libra. You've got to change. Aren't you glad you changed? See what I had in store for you? I'm working as your agent of possibilities, as a supporter, not here, I'm not here to punish you. I wanted you to get on the other side of the mountain, get on the other side of the mountain. But Libra, you have one more thing you have to do, which is to believe in yourself, which is to have patience to see things through, which is to, um, to really, uh, invest in yourself as much as you would invest in others. And then you have the wheel of fortune, then you have success, but you had some teaching that you had to go through on this. So it's not always been easy, but I'll take this for your, <laughs> for your final card of the day. I'll also take justice. It's you personified, which is telling me you'll find the balance necessary. And also in the near future, I'll take the, the king of wands, which you've got good, powerful cards here. In the soul path, there's a little bit of pain. There's a little bit of something you're working through. But look how much stronger that made you. Look at how much love and support you have around you. This can also be like the Ten of Cups. Okay, so good energy overall. But there is this sort of awakening. And I'm going to laugh now when I see hummingbirds fighting out there. We have to find a way to cooperate a little bit. I think that's going to be key this month. Okay, thank you so much. What a powerful reading we had today with some really important messages around healing and possibilities. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, just a couple of notes here before we wrap up. Um, I will be back later this week uh, to read for Scorpio and Sagittarius. Um, I will put the Sagittarius link live after this so that you can set a reminder, but the Scorpio one is already there. You can go to my website for, for more information on that. As I said earlier, I'm starting to do um, some more shorts, almost um, not every day, every other day at least. Um, so if you want to follow me on social media, uh, feel free to take a look. I'll paste the link here. There's my social media links. And like I said, um, Instagram in particular is a perfect place because I put everything there. If you are on TikTok and you enjoy that, you can also follow me there. Um, and those are two other places that I'm really active. But uh, you can see all the links on that social media link. And then let me see if I have this open and I'll paste the links to the upcoming readings so that you have them. Um, so we have a Scorpio and Sagittarius reading that are upcoming. Here's the links to those. And a reminder that my... Um, the mid-month collective, if you missed it, it's available. It's on my main page as the featured video. And we'll have two more bonus readings at the end of the month. So all that information is on my, my site, but I like to kind of put it out there just so you have it. Thank you so much. Thanks to Maria for helping me moderate today. And uh, you're going to have a great month ahead. Remember, your resource cards are pretty good, Eight of Pentacles and the Wheel of Fortune. Um, but there's just some necessary shifts in balance that you have to to make and hello that's your whole um that's your whole sign so you're going to be able to do that okay lots of love and light thank you so much for the final uh super chat stickers and all of that i i will i always go back by the way and read everything i just can't do it all in real time or i would get distracted but i'm trying to say thank you a little bit more as i'm uh reading just so you know that i see it love and light to everyone i'll see you again later this week and in between hopefully on instagram and tiktok all right take care everyone um and uh have a great week and a great month ahead Bye bye